Okay, so we'll get started. Uh, the topic is deep linking, how to improve your mobile infrastructure. And you know, I chose this title for a reason. When you think of infrastructure, you should think of something very simple, something very basic, fundamental facilities that allow a society to function properly, right? People can go where they wanna go, they can do what they wanna do because they have the buildings, the roads, the bridges to do it. So the question is, does your mobile app have the infrastructure to allow people to go where they're wanting to go and do what they want to do. So that's what we're going to look at. The simple answer is no. That's why people are getting stuck on home pages. Uh, you'll notice that whenever somebody clicks on an email link, they're being rerouted to a mobile website instead of accessing the native app. This is across all apps, so we're going to take a look at a few of those demos. We're also having a hard time getting customers and app users into in-product pages. So if I want to look at a pair of shoes on an eBay app, I have to go to the home page first, and we're going to do a couple case uses there. The other thing that's probably the most important for everyone sitting in this room is that Google is not indexing your app pages. Um, it's called app indexing. They're working on this right now. There was an update to KitKat 4.4, which will allow Google to begin to index app pages. So if you can imagine all of the app pages that exist being indexed by the largest search engine on Earth, in the next five years we'll have trillions and trillions of links that users can now search, and we're going to take a look at that. But those developers who understand this and are first to market will be rewarded handsomely for that, because Google will start to open up how people can find your app. So one thing that I do on a daily basis is I talk to developers about third-party tools. These tools are very expensive, and deep linking can help you not have to use these tools, things like push notifications, uh, things like paid-for acquisition campaigns, because you're basically looking for users, and the best way to find a user is when they're searching for you organically, and now Google has your app indexed. So those are a couple of things you can circumvent. This is free code. This is free to use. You can implement it. You're all very talented, and it's actually very simple to do. So it's really hard to find a presenter on this topic. It's never been presented before, and that's why I'm here. I'm also here because in 2012, I developed an app. It was a content app, and content publishers know more than anybody the pain of Google not indexing their, their app content. So what I was trying to do is I have a blog, and I have over 300 people writing on that blog when it was the, at its most active point. So I developed an Android app to take all that content over to a native environment. After I did that, I suddenly realized that all of that effort is not searchable organically. So for an indie publisher with an indie app, that pretty much killed um, any chance of people finding my app and its content. So bigger names that, that um, have the same issue is Flipboard. So all that content you look at on Flipboard, you cannot find that on Google today. Imagine all those articles are not searchable. So that's the problem that I found. The company I work for is very interested in this topic because mobile ad spend does not match the time users spend on mobile. We are at about a 30 billion deficit right now between what is possible for the users on mobile. So vServe Mobi has a ton of data. And these ad exchanges have a ton of data. So we have 420 million users reached, 60 billion ad requests. And I bring this up because if anybody knows uh, how the user experience is broken and how developers are losing money, it's ad exchanges. Because we track this all of the time. Oh, I'm so excited. I see this pair of shoes. I go to buy it. I can't buy it because I just was redirected to a mobile website and I can't do a one-click shopping cart. So let's get into our app demos. Let's see exactly what the problem is right now and what it is we're trying to solve. Because for some reason, developers have a hard time identifying this problem. That's why we have so many apps which are not easily navigated. So LinkedIn. LinkedIn is common because right now you can see I have the native app of LinkedIn. Can everybody see that, the icon? OK. But commonly, we're, we're emailing around profiles. And I want to access this person's profile. This one happens to be mine. So again, I have the native app. And I do a lot inside of that native app. I'm a very dedicated, loyal user to LinkedIn. I have over 1,500 contacts. I love LinkedIn. Um, so somebody now is emailing me. And I want to connect with this person. So I click, the, I click the link. Why is it not prompting me to open up the native app? 
I'm going to show you some apps that have actually used deep linking, and they will prompt you to open up the app. You know, we see that I, a dedicated user, am not being redirected to the native app, and I should be. So we're losing the mobile user to the web. Does anybody know why that is? Not anybody a distinct to... URL that the device went back to, or? There is a URL issue. It's actually because the device is not detecting that it has this native app. So we want to make sure that there's a communication going back and forth between the device telling the call to action that, yes, we actually have a native app here. And if there's not a native app, then we can take the mobile user to the website, to a mobile website. So let's talk about Spotify. So Spotify is a really good example because there is so much in-app content you want to send to your friends with Spotify. They have so many songs. I don't say to my friend, go to Spotify. I like Spotify. I say, go and check out Daft Punk. Go and check out uh, Lana Del Rey. And I'm saying to them, I like this exact song. So can you take the person into the app? That's the question. I'm in the app. So LinkedIn did not take me to the app, and Spotify seamlessly has placed me inside of the app. So they have implemented deep linking. This is why we're seeing so many login attempts, is that they are not detecting that you have the native app. And so the native app actually is storing a lot of your user information. And you've created this rich in-app experience for a reason. So you have your profile. Uh, I'm a big user of Yelp. I have all these profiles. I want to rate and review that restaurant very quickly. When you're redirected to the website, you have to actually log in all over again. So Yelp is a great example, because if I'm searching for a vegetarian restaurant in Boston, as a Yelp user, I should be taken directly in app. So right now, we're trying to access content. And that's pretty important if, you're, if you are Yelp or Spotify and you're trying to get to a specific song. But when you take this a little deeper, and you go into e-commerce, this starts to get really, really powerful. Because they're not just accessing a song, they're accessing a purchase. And now they can check out fairly quickly. Let's take a look at eBay. OK, right there, we know eBay has no deep linking implemented. It has brought me to m.ebay.com. They have lost a potential purchase right there. See, I have the eBay app. So this is where that starts to get really important, is if you're like LinkedIn and you're not launching the in-app experience and I don't have my saved information, I'm not going to purchase. I'm in a hurry. I'm on a mobile phone. I have Etsy here. So if I'm shopping, you know, what's Etsy going to do? Is it going to take me to the site or is it going to take me to the app? Boom, it took me to the app. OK, this is sort of elementary deep linking. And maybe some of you are thinking, well, I don't have an e-commerce app. And well, how does this apply to me? I don't usually use email marketing, like LinkedIn. People don't email my app around. How does this, how does this help me? Well, we're going to get to that. So again, we have two problems going on. Are we detecting that the app is already on the, already on the phone? And if so, why are we sending them to a mobile site? Those are the things we want to fix with mobile deep linking. Excuse me, if uh, someone only has an app but with no website, then it will go directly to the app. I mean, can't you just, uh, then that, that's, that, that won't be an issue, right? It must be going to the home page then only of the app. Oh, OK. It won't go to the, I got it, to the exact place where you can quickly just do the transaction or per session. And that's the big dilemma, right? Every app developer must decide, do I bring them to the mobile website, or do I drop them on my home page in the app? And another question, do you ask them to download the app? Do you kind of encourage that? What, what, what's the best practice? So if you're sharing, if I've got, I don't know, not Spotify, but my own music app, and I'm sharing a song with you, right. and I send you the link, right. um, or, or whether it's a deep link, you don't have the of the application, you could do one of a couple of things. I'm assuming you could send them to you to a mobile site that you could see, or you could encourage me, or you could be encouraged to to download the app so you can see it in app. 
Is there a best practice? Would you advise? What are your thoughts around that? Yes, thank you. I love you guys because I'm actually getting to that. That's exactly what will apply to everybody in this room. So I'm really glad you brought that up because it's, no, it's happening the way I want it to happen. Where you're thinking to yourself, I don't have an e-commerce app or you know, I don't use the email marketing. But one of the best things that's going to solve for you is that if they're prompted to download your app because of this Spotify song, you're a music competitor to Spotify, and they go to download your app, when they're done, they will go right directly to that song. And that's, that's what you want, because that person has just put a lot of time into going to the app store and downloading your app, and today, you have to make them search again from the homepage. So just like eBay can bring you to an end product, or excuse me, Etsy can bring me to the exact gold necklace that I liked, you can do the same after they've downloaded your app, rather than dropping them on the homepage. So that's a huge source of attrition right now. Okay, so a, a case study here, this company called Catalog Spree, it's a smaller app. They were getting ready for the holidays and they wanted to increase their user engagement and purchases with deep linking. So they went ahead and paid one of those vendors that if you're convinced that deep linking is important, today you can start contributing to the open source project so that you don't have to pay a vendor. They went ahead and paid a vendor and dropped the promotion link inside of actual emails, which then led to their native app. And they saw incredible numbers. This is the exact same app. Nothing had changed. They saw a six times increasement in mobile engagement, and they averaged 25 minutes per session. This was a case study closely watched because they did nothing other than deep link. That's it. So that's what we're trying to do is you basically spend about an hour of your time on your app, and you're seeing huge results. Okay, so this is what um, you know, the gentleman in the back was speaking about. How does this apply to everyone here? Is that at some point, if they see your app and they go to the app store, you now have a deep link that will bring them back to that pair of shoes or back to that song. This happens a lot when you break a session in a game. Gaming apps greatly benefit from this because when you come back, you can deep link right back into a deeper stage, a deeper level that you had been playing. Okay, so here's another uh, use for this. Let's say I'm checking flights for Boston, I'm from San Francisco, and then I go to the weatherchannel.com and I look up uh, weather in Boston. I can now go back into the app of Travelocity and check out with that flight. This should remind you of something, this, this app to app promotion, this buddying up, pulling each other's information, calling each other's information. Does that remind anybody of something? How about a RESTful API? Okay, that's pretty much the exact same thing we're going to start doing with deep linking. So today I can tell you about the problem of eBay not taking people to a shopping cart, LinkedIn not taking people to the native app. I'm telling you in the future, there's gonna be a lot of cross promotion with apps because of this implementation of deep linking. Because now you can deep link the Weather Channel can deep leak into Travelocity and vice versa. And they can start to communicate as native apps horizontally. So here are the things we're trying to accomplish. And this is what you can accomplish today. And like I said, over time, this will grow. Uh, we're trying to circumvent the home page when we already know and have a loyal user that we love. We worked very hard for our native apps. We want our device to detect that person has our native app and not send them to a mobile website. We don't want to fear losing them. Okay, we also want to make sure we have in-app product pages, and this is going to relate to the next section about Google indexing these product pages. But first we have to be able to access them, and we have to create them. You have your choice as to how you want to do this. Um, this is the one that's the open source GitHub project. So basically what you're doing is you're creating it, and then you're registering it, and you're making sure that when somebody clicks your link that there's a call.
Okay, so all that great in-app content is invisible. This is my favorite part of the presentation because again, it applies to everybody and it's talking about the fact that Google doesn't allow you to search for in-app content. Um, there's no such thing as an actual demo. So the, the story goes that in November, KitKat 4.4, Google, part of that update was to do app indexing. It was a very quiet update. Since then, they've worked with about 30 apps and they've been testing this feature. This is the example that Google uh, has actually given to people because sometimes it's hard to visualize why would I need this thing that I've never used before. So why do we want Google indexing our pages? Well, maybe you like recipes and their, their example and case study is all the cooks. And it's this really neat crowdsourcing app where uh, everybody can put up their own recipe. If I go to search for these cookies, these chocolate cookies later, and I have the app, Google will bring me back to that app. Um, this is under development right now, again, with about 30 different apps. And we're expecting this to be public by November 2014. So this would be our goal. Direct more traffic to the users. Use SEO even. Uh, now you can start to use SEO for your pages. You can do a lot more with marketing and getting people inside of your app or just not losing them to your competitor, really. So we'll take a look at how to do that. So you guys can feast on that here, and I'll show you what's really happening here. So you're basically registering the intent in your manifest file, and you do need to work with your sitemap or put or register it in your head tags. And you're also basically allowing Google to crawl your app. In order to allow and enable Google to crawl your app content and allow users to enter your app, you have to add intent filters for the relevant activities in your app manifest. So you're basically doing two things. You're working with the native code and then you're looking at how to actually register that with Google. And that looks similar to how websites are registered with Google. So you're doing two activities there. Um, and the main thing is to get that Google bot on your content. And it's these filters that will allow um, the deep linking to be indexed. See. Do, you, do you need more information on how to set up the indexing so Google can search your site, your app, I mean? Would, would you guys like more information there? Okay. So in your manifest file, add one or more intent filter elements for the activities searchable from Google search results. OK, so you're going there first, your manifest file. Add an action tag that specifies action view intent action. Then you're going to add a data tag. And for the most part, that's it. There are a couple more optional things you can do. Declare the format for your deep links. This is all uh, for the app. So you want to declare your scheme. So this is, this is how rare it is. Uh, only 14% have external links and only 8% have deep linking capabilities. These are the big players right now in deep linking. Yeah, so I want to thank my company because they're really great. They work 50% on feature phones still because they work so much with developers in emerging markets. So some human stories is they've sent developers into Egypt during the revolution for developer workshops. Um, there's some issues going on in Thailand right now. I have some developer uh, relations people on my team who are under curfew. Uh, you know, it's just some incredible outreach going on for emerging markets, so. Cool, are you all gonna go home at DeepLink now? <laughs> <laughs>